Hi, I'm Jeff Kornberg, and on this episode of The Dragon's Tomb, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Scythe. Scythe is a two-player game that takes place in an expansive nature preserve filled with rare and magnificent endangered animals. Players take on the role of poachers, who have infiltrated the preserve and are trying to hunt down the animals before the park rangers can bring them to safety. To set up, place the board in the center of your table. The centermost spot is the ranger station, and this is where the endangered animals and the rangers will all begin. Each animal starts with 18 health points, which you keep track of on this tracker on the left side of the board. Next, have each player pick a color and take all the corresponding pieces. These are your poachers. They've already eradicated all the boars and whales from the preserve, so one player will start them on the boar sanctuary, while the other player will start them on the whale sanctuary. Each player begins with 7 points of health, which you keep track of on this tracker on the bottom right of the board. Place these poach cards in a stack on the top right of the board, these black market tiles here on the bottom left, and have each player take one target token. Now you're ready to start playing. The object of the game is to be the poacher who ends up with the most money. The animals and rangers will be trying to escape to their respective colored sanctuaries along the sides of the board, and as poachers, it's your job to hunt down as many of them as you can before they get away. The tallest player goes first. At the start of your turn, take the poacher's power wheel, representing your strength, and the ranger's power wheel, representing the animal's strength. Turn them both upside down, spin them, then flip them over and compare numbers. If the rangers have a higher number than you, subtract your number from theirs, and then move your health down that number of spots. Additionally, you must also pick any one animal to move that number of spaces closer to their colored sanctuary. You may take them along any path you choose, as long as it ultimately brings them closer to their goal. If an animal ever reaches their sanctuary, they are safe for the rest of the game and cannot be poached. Also, if your health ever reaches zero, on your next turn, instead of turning the power wheels, the only thing you're allowed to do is drink tiger blood, which brings your health back up to five. Taking a step back, if you win after spinning the power wheels, subtract the ranger's number from yours and take that number of action cubes. You may then spend these action cubes in a variety of ways. If there are any open spaces adjacent to your starting sanctuary, you may place poachers on them, paying one action cube per poacher. Once on the board, you may move them along the paths. Each space move costs one cube. Most spaces have an optional action listed on them you may pay two cubes to activate. Using this red action lets you move your health up by 3 points, and if your health ever reaches 16 points, you earn 1 ninja star. Using this gray action gives you 1 steel bar. The yellow action gives you a pot of honey. The blue action gives you a bear trap. This lighter blue action allows you to embark on a short hike, where you capture a termite. And the brown action lets you take 1 tree trunk. All of these items allow you to perform special abilities, which I'll get to a little later on in the video. If at any point you are one space away from an animal, you may pay a cube to try and poach it. When you do this, flip over a poach card. Whatever number is revealed shows how much you hurt the animal, and you move their health down that amount. If you ever reduce an animal's health down to zero, congratulations, you've successfully poached it. Immediately flip over a black market tile and place the poached animal onto it. Going forward, you'll now have the option to spend one cube to sell the animal on the black market. The left side of each black market tile shows what spaces your poachers must be on in order to sell, and the right side of each tile shows how much money you'll earn based on how many poachers are on those spaces. For example, with this tile, your poachers must either be at the ranger station or on a short hike space. If at the time you use the black market action, you have one poacher on one of these spaces, you'll earn two coins. If you have two to three poachers on these spaces, you'll get four coins. Four to five poachers will get you six coins, and six to seven poachers will get you nine coins. Afterwards, discard both the black market tile and the animal's carcass into the box. Since you only get to use a black market action once per poached animal, you'll want to strategically place your poachers across the board before using it in order to maximize profits. Also, you may use the items you've collected to make poaching easier for yourself or harder for your opponent. 
On your turn, spending one cube allows you to play all of any one item type that you possess. With Honey Pots, you may trade in any number you own to lure an animal of your choice that many spaces closer to one of your poachers. For Tree Trunks, you may place them on any path on the board, rendering them impassable. With Termites, you can place them on Tree Trunks. They'll eat up all the wood, destroying the tree and reopening the path. For Bear Traps, you may place them on any unoccupied space. If an animal or poacher goes over one, they lose 4 health, but the trap gets discarded. For Ninja Stars, you may throw them at any animal or at an opponent's poacher. If a poacher is hit, move it back to its starting sanctuary. If an animal is hit, you instantly kill it and may claim its carcass. For Steel Bars, if you have 6 of them, you may trade them in to build a Robo Poacher. Robo Poachers are robots programmed to automatically poach for you, which means you'll no longer need to play the game. They'll move around, and their artificial intelligence will analyze the board, find the most ideal strategies, and finish the game on your behalf. There are also target spaces across the board, which allow you to perform an extremely powerful action once per game. If any of your poachers are on one of these spaces, you may spend 4 action cubes, trade in your target token, and then play either your anthill, garbage can, mini golf course, or magnet. If you play the anthill, an army of ants marches over your opponent and steals all their honey for you. If you play the garbage can, you may place your 4 trash bins anywhere on the board. This stinks up the nature preserve, permanently blocking those spaces and causing all animals and poachers, including yours, to lose 5 health. If you play your mini golf course, you may place it on any spot on the board. If an animal or your opponent ever moves through it, they stop the play around, earning you one coin per visit. If your opponent has built a robo poacher and it happens to be on a magnet space, playing your magnet will fry its electronics and remove it from the game. Your opponent must then come back and finish the game themselves. Once all the animals have either been poached or reached their sanctuaries, the end of the game is triggered. Bonus coins are then awarded according to this chart on the left side of the board. Throughout the game, you should be keeping track of how many ninja stars you throw, how many sand traps you hit while playing mini golf, and how many times you do any activity twice that involves four different colors. For each category, if you have the higher total compared to your opponent, you gain the amount of coins shown in the top row. If you have the second most, you gain the coins shown in the middle row. And if you have the third most, you gain the coins shown here at the bottom. Unfortunately, no bonus coins are awarded for 4th, 5th, 6th, or 7th place. After this, count up all of your coins. The player with the most is the better poacher and wins the game. The box also includes cards and player boards for the optional solo legacy adult variant of the game, but I'll leave those rules for you to discover on your own. All in all, this game is a blast to play. Though, while the mechanics and gameplay are fun, I must admit I'm a little disappointed in the game for glorifying poaching like this. I personally know a ton of people who were directly influenced to get into the illegal animal trade because of this game, and ultimately, many of them have ended up getting hurt, arrested, or even worse, fined. I wish the publisher, Stonemeyer Games, acted a bit more responsibly and made it clear that poaching should only be done by trained professionals.